I have been trying to learn Japanese over the, over the last few months. I've been using a method called the Pimsler method. The Pimsler method is a method where they try to take all, all of the lessons and grammar and whatever, and they just reduce it down to listening and speaking. It's just a bunch of MP3s you listen to. And they try to teach you how to listen to Japanese and how to speak it. So in an MP3, to teach you a word, they would say what the word means in English, and then they would say it in Japanese, and then syllable by syllable say it in Japanese again until you understand how it sounds. And then they would teach you how to use it in a sentence. And then they would ask you to construct your own sentence about how to use it. So the first lesson, for instance, is basically just teaches you how to say, I know how to speak Japanese a little. Nihongo ga skoshi wakarimasu. But before they start off with you saying, I understand, wakarimasu. Because that, that is like the simplest sentence you can say. Wakarimasu, I understand. And then they teach you how to say, I understand Japanese. Nihongo ga wakarimasu. And then they teach you how to say, I understand Japanese a little. Nihongo ga skoshi wakarimasu. But they kind of force you to think about it yourself. They don't really give you the way to say it. They sort of try to make it so that you construct it on your own, in your own head. It's a very useful and interesting way of teaching. I think that it's good. But the reason I'm talking about this now is because I'm about to reach the end of all of the lessons that I have in the Pimsleur method. There's actually three sets of lessons. There's the beginners, the intermediate, and the advanced. And I'm at the tail end of the advanced. There's 30 MP3s, and I'm at number 28. So I'm going to have to find a different method to learn Japanese, because I've been, every single workday, I have listened to one of these MP3s in order to learn Japanese. But now that I'm out, I'm going to have to go and find a new method, find a new thing to do. And so I have arbitrarily decided to go for Duolingo, because I've heard great things about it from a lot of people, from my brothers, from my family, from my family. I only talk with my family, so that's all that I hear about it from. But whatever, I've heard great things about Duolingo. So I've started, I've opened up an account, started the lessons in Japanese. They start with writing, they start with hiragana and katakana. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through writing again, because I've already learned how to do that. So I rushed my way through those lessons and, and it was like, oh, you already know this, you already know this, you already know this. And so I got through them really quickly. And um, I, hope that, I hope it doesn't interpret my getting through those lessons really quickly because I already knew this stuff as me being super smart and being able to intuitively understand and learn these things at lightning speed. And then they give me like the ultimate impossible task to do in the next lessons. I hope that's not the case, but it probably isn't. Anyways... Duolingo is different from Pimsleur in a few different ways. First, it focuses on visual and audio. There is an audio aspect to it, but I think, from what I can see, it's very textbook visual feel to it. Like It's, it's like you're taking these lessons from the textbook and not necessarily learning how to speak. It is also a... In a lot of cases, it is like the choose the best answer, or you, you have four choices for your answers. And so, I kind of feel like whenever you have four choices for your answers, and you just have to choose the right one, it's almost like you're cheating. Because one of them is already going to be the right one, and if you hadn't, like if you already see one of the answers, like you see a list of the answers, then you, you're going to know what to say. Your mind's going to remember it by seeing it. But if you have to bring it up from memory without that, then it's a lot harder. So I don't know if it's a good I don't know if it's a good emulation of what it's actually like to try and speak or talk in Japanese. But I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to try it for a, a few months and see if it gets me anywhere. It might get me farther with vocabulary because while the Pimsleur method is really good at teaching you how to speak and how to construct sentences, uh, it's kind of slow at the vocabulary. It has to teach you like maybe one or two or three words per lesson, which is kind of a good thing because then you remember those words better. But then it has you use those words and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll be able to learn a lot more vocabulary with the Duolingo. So that's what I'm going to use it for mainly, I think, vocabulary. 
Also, it'll teach me some kanji. I didn't expect it to do this, but it went into kanji almost immediately after the hiragana, which is bizarre and is going to be a very big challenge, I think. Because kanji, if you don't know, is every single word in the kanji alphabet is meaning means a different thing, or every single symbol means a different word. It's not like the letters of the alphabet, where you can form a bunch of words with different letters. No, kanji... Actually, kanji in Japanese is even more complicated, because every single kanji has both a Chinese reading and a Japanese reading, and depending on the context of the situation, you're either going to read it in the Chinese reading and or in the Japanese reading. And some the kanji doesn't always relate to the word that it's spelling out. Like, you could have two kanji that have nothing to do with the word that it's actually spelling out, but because the Japanese sound that they make happens to make the sound of the word, that's why that word represent, is represented by those kanji. So kanji gets really, really complicated really, really quickly. But whatever. I'll try and learn it. I'll see what happens. Duolingo, I am ready to learn your lessons. Pimsleur, I'm about to leave. I have had a great time with you because you have taught me how to speak, which is not what a lot of other people teach. But you have a limited amount of lessons, and I'm going to have to move on soon after two more lessons from you because I'm on lesson 28. There's still a nine, There's still a 29, and there's still a 30. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. This is the end of the Coquino podcast. I hope you enjoyed it.